Hello, welcome to Downtown Tailoring. I'm so excited for today's video. We have received so many requests of viewers that want to learn how to interpret pattern. So I'll guide you through that. Let's go. These are all my patterns. Most of them are a gift from my cousin. I love to sew from pattern because it gives me a self-assurance, but usually my projects include details hard to find, and that's why I mostly do my own patterns. Original design, original patterns. When I was browsing through the McCall, Simplicity, Burdas, Boderick, I chose these three. I like this one because of the vintage flare, and I wanted to make it as a blouse, but being the overskirt so wide, I wasn't sure if I needed to reduce the width. I was making it too complicated for my first pattern with you so mm, no this one was my second option but I'm not so sure if this style is still on trend so I decided to go for this one as it can be something classic it's classified as very easy let's see I'll guide you through my mind when I'm working with patterns I mean I'm not sure if others do it this way I've never asked nobody never teach me to do this and I haven't asked either so this is all my way. I'm not sure if this step is so important for me because I'm fashion designer or maybe because my eyes are trained to find details on designs as a former fashion design professor or maybe because it's just common sense. But anyways, the first thing I do is to look at the design. For example, in this pattern, we have four available designs we can make. If you look in general, you'd see four designs that range from informal to semi-formal. And if we even use different material, we could easily widen this range. I could use knit here to make it more sport, or use organza or guipur to make, you know, like a cocktail evening bolero. This one can be made in cotton a little longer to blouse it under a high-waisted straight pants for an everywhere casual look. So I look to all these details in order to imagine a nice outcome. I'm illustrating this for you, but in fact I picture all in my mind and sometimes they don't come out as I expected, but most of the time they come as I imagine. <laughs> Today we are going to use this one. It's not too casual, not too formal. And this line kind of visually justifies the drop shoulders and the wide look and big sleeve. It's all a matter of visual communication. And I will use this material. This is 100% cotton. It's more for curtains or cushions. But I do really like it for this one. And I took a picture of it and then I transplanted here in my design. And I think it will look good. My next step is to look at the flats or technical drawings. They will tell you, without the busyness of the picture or illustration, what are you going to do. So this is the design I chose. You can see the color, the kind of canisou with the drop shoulders, the sleeve, you know, not really too many elements. This is the front and this is the back. This is so important. And notice that we haven't still opened the package yet. Well, I did of camera. This is the code of your pattern. It identifies it and uh, will allow you to find it in case that you love it but you lose some pieces. It is a good idea to picture it. Here are the sizes you can make your pattern. This one comes in 8, 10, 12, and 14. And remember that the size of the patterns for Boderick is not the size that you can find in the stores. So here it will tell you the information about your size. So for example, this one is from eight to 14, and this one says like uh, it cut right here. So it will tell you, for example, that if your bust is 34 and your waist 26 and a half and your hip 36, then you are size 12. We are gonna work in this size, in the size 14, for a bust of 36 and a waist of 28 and a hip of 38. It is very important that you recognize your sewing skills level so you don't get overwhelmed with your work. Here's a description of your patterns. So it says here what it is. Here you can find the notions you will use, like a buttons, fusible webbing, you know. And this says what kind of fabric you can use to make this pattern. You see, this because of the style of this. See, it's so versatile that you can really use 
like a lot of kind of material. Here, it will tell you how much material you need to buy. That's very important because sometimes we don't know, right? But if you see it in your pattern, it will tell you and then you will know. So for example, if you are size 14 and we are going to do the jacket B, we will need one and three quarter yards if it's 45 inches wide or one and a, well, this says one and three eight, but who buys one and three eight? So one and a half yards if the material is 60 inches wide. So as you can see, just the cover of your pattern, it has really a lot of information. I'm opening the pattern and usually you will find two booklets. This one is the pattern per se and this one are the instructions. This is just information. The instructions are very important. I know me myself sometimes I feel like oh my gosh should I read everything but if you read all your instructions you will be sure that you will get all the information you need. A trick I do is that I say okay Okay, I will just read for five minutes. I put a timer and then after five minutes, I'm really interested and then I can finish. But I will tell you the most important things that you really need to know. Again here, the first thing you get is your flats. You see? So this is A, B, C, and D. We said that we are working with the B. This indicates all the pieces that have the pattern. One, two, three, four, five has 11 pieces. And then here, it will indicate you what pieces you need. For example, if you are doing the jacket B, you will need the piece one, two, three, four, five, and six and seven but you don't need the eight or the nine or the tenth or the eleven so here identifies which pieces are from one to eleven one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven here again the measurements and then here it will give you some information that is important for you to understand what you are going to do for example they will tell you that the lines shown are cutting lines however 5 8 of the inch or 1.5 centimeter seam allowance are included so you don't have to you know like uh, to get crazy oh my god do i have to leave seam allowance or not no they are telling you that the seam allowance are included they are not marked but they are included unless otherwise indicated and then they are telling you something else very important they are telling you that if the pattern is like that this is the right side of the pattern these dots represent the wrong side of the pattern. This is the right side of the fabric and this is the wrong side of the fabric. Why do you want that? Because it will give you a better understanding. For example, when they put here, the pattern here, you see they are putting in the wrong side. So it will give you more information and you will understand everything better. Then they will tell you other informations that are really important. For example, they explain in you the grain line of the material this is very important when you are cutting you have to align the grain line with your pattern with the grain line to your fabric this is very important usually any material that you will have we are working with this one this is the salvage of the material like at the edge and um, the edge represents you the grain line so you see when I try to pull it doesn't pull so much but when I pull like that you see it stretches a little bit this is why it's so important that the material are cut like that like a straight like that because you need more flexibility on the width and not in the length that's the main reason <laughs> i'm sorry sometimes i see clothes that are not made to the green line and i kind of stare at them and then i look like i'm creepy so this one this symbol represents that when you cut the material they have to be folded this is really really important because most of the material like uh, the pattern always comes like just the half of your pattern and then you have to cut it to fold the material and cut two pieces but sometimes you have to cut where the fold is so when you open you cut your material you cut your material but then when you open you have your material complete 
You see, that's why sometimes you have to be careful and be sure that you are doing it right because if you make that mistake and then you have two pieces, then it's not what you were looking for. So this is the layout for the jacket B. And as you can see, it will show you the layout depends of the width of the material. For example, if you have material that is 45 inches, this will be the layout. If it's 60 inches, that will be. They will give you options so you can do, you know, pretty much whatever you want. But you know, this is useful information because it will make your life easier. Here you will find the sewing information as we read before they will give you five eight of the seam allowance unless otherwise indicated sometimes you have to sew just that one quarter inch depends on the part of the piece right and then they will give you the information about the right side the wrong side interfacing lining everything because let me show you like when they are explaining how to put the pieces together you see you can see if it's the wrong size of the right size so it will give you the information of how to sew it is telling you that you know like just details about how to press or how to trim the corners and notch you know this is very important too if you really follow the instructions there is no reason why you your garment shouldn't look decent enough and then this is for the jacket they are explaining you when to use the interfacing and these are all the instruction of how to sew it these are all your patterns and this is where the fun begins again you see there is information here so these are my patterns for example today we are going to make a pattern size 14 so when they do the patterns they do different like they do the same pattern the same piece in different sizes let me show you one that fits in the camera. I don't know if you can see, but this is my collar. This is my shoulder. This is the drop sleeve. And this is where it finished because it has like a canesu. Let me show you in the pattern, you see? Collar, shoulders, finished where the sleeve start and the finish of the canesu is here, you see? When they make it, they make it in all the patterns. This is eight, 10, 12, and 14. And uh, each pattern, they put it with a different line. This is the line for size eight. This is the line for size 10, 12, and 14. So so when we are going to cut each piece, we are going to cut each piece using this line. This is our line. They are here showing you which piece is, is the piece number one. And they say that this is the upper front for the jacket A and the jacket B. If you see in the patterns here, the jacket A and the jacket B are the ones that are cut in the center, but the jacket C and D they don't have those lines. So there is more useful information here. For example, they put here a notch. When we cut it, we will cut it like a, you know, sometimes people cut the whole thing, but I like just to cut like a little bit notch here. And that will help me to recognize the shoulders in the other side at the back and put it together. When I sew, I will sew it together. Other information that is useful is the grain line. Here, they put it like that, but usually when I use the grain line, I use it with a double arrow. They are telling you that this line is the center front because again, you see, this is a jacket, this goes there, and then you have two pieces together, they cross like that. The center line has to be somewhere in between this and this, like in between this and this is the center line. So it's marked here and usually the center lines go from one inch to one inch and one quarter. This is a pretty much standard. So you have more notches to show and that this material, they tell you that this piece, you have to cut it twice, you see, cut twice. And as I said before, when you have your material, you usually will fold it in half, like you will fold it like that and then you put the material on top. So everything you cut once, but it will be twice. You know, each pattern will have their own useful information. But let me show you this one. This is the back. This is the back for the A and B, you see? Remember the A, the back has one top part and one bottom part, you see? So this is this one, this bottom part. As you can see, it tells you here that you have to cut it folded. 
and this is your center back and they will tell you very good information which is the waistline why is that because if you wanted to make it longer or shorter for example you have this ref it says that is like a five inches and a half from the waistline uh, longer than the waistline and you know that if you wanted to touch your hips it has to be at least six inches plus the hem but in that case you know that this is a short piece that doesn't go to the hips really so those things are important information and they will give you here for example a line where you can shorten or lengthen what you will do if you want to shorten this is easy i can show you very easy you just fold it that way as much as you need so for example if i shorten like that how much shorter it will be shorter then that way you can know how short it will be or how long if you want to lengthen you do the opposite you cut it here and then you put the two pieces a little bit more separate so let's go and cut before you cut your pattern you have to be sure what size really you want if you think that you might use other sizes after then better to copy the pattern instead of cutting it for that, you will need tracing paper, like a, a paper like that. And then you are going to put it on top. I do not have tracing paper, but this is very useful, mostly when you have kids. You put it on top and then you mark all your parts. Another way to do it, you use craft paper and then you put your craft paper underneath and then you can mark your pattern using your tracing wheel. I'm more used to the craft paper and the tracing wheel, but to be honest, this is not so recommended because I will make holes in my pattern and sometimes it's not the best. Something else that you have to keep in mind that if you are tracing your pattern to use your new patterns, you have to copy all the marks. Every mark you see, you have to copy. Now I have all my pieces and the next thing that I need to do is to lay all my pieces down the same way they suggest. For example, I'm going to do 514 in the V and my material measures almost 30 inches but it's not 30 inches it's around 56 inches or so. They tell you here your size like if your material is 45 if your material is 45 or if it's 60 and then if it's 45 and then it's the size 8 10 12 14 you put it that way in our case if it's 60 you put it this way 60 14 you put it this way that's what i'm gonna do now in another video we can sew everything okay and here you go this is more or less the layout i use the same one i won't cut it yet because i still need to do other things that i want to explain you in the next video but i want you to take a look of the little details like a migraine line that it has to be in a parallel with the edge like here this part the pattern says that has to be folded so i put all the pieces that are folded like the back and the other part of the back in here i want to show you for example that this one this is the facing in this case in the pattern they asked me in the instruction they told me that i have to put it the opposite like a, with the wrong side you see how this five that will be the right side but so it fit well we have to put it in the wrong side and you know there are other details i usually when i cut the pattern you know now the material i put it in the right way but in fact most of the time i prefer to put it in the wrong side so i can make some marks in this case I think I don't need to make marks like darts or things like that so it's okay in the right way but I just wanted to let you know those details and um, I hope that you like this video I know this is a lot of information I wanted to do the whole thing but I think it's better to let the information to seek in and then next week I think we can just make our garment how about that so if you like this video please don't forget to subscribe share like thank you so much bye